3377 on Merrimack Circle. Uh, that one was resolved because they complied with the request of removing it. Uh, we have letters, uh, lawns rather, that was 23394. We sent the letter. And 23430, that's uh, the um, Splash Pine Court. Now, I've been in touch with that individual and uh, he will comply. Okay. Uh, and as we know, 23386 Circle, that's work in progress. And you and I should go and talk to them. Uh, we have two miscellaneous, 23415 Red uh, Court. Uh, they all, that was also resolved and they complied with the request. And then we have the 4116, uh, the Hoon Holly Court. Uh, I think some of us were involved with that and they resolved most of the issues and they complied. And that's the end of the report. All right, thank you, Lars. Uh, uh, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the recommendations of the Covenants Committee. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Thank you, Roger. Uh, um, okay. All business. Uh, the entrance patio planter, well, that's still, uh, I'm still waiting on a few things for that. Uh, uh, some estimates, and uh, that's going to get done at some point, uh, but it's still in the works. The entrance lighting. Uh, I've been in touch with FPNL, and one of the things we can do is uh, people were talking about lighting in the front along Coconut. Uh, also, someone mentioning it's dark in areas in our community. So uh, I got this uh, letter from Anna Brockway, who's the customer project manager, and basically what happens is you we can add lights. Uh, provided there's a transformer nearby and um, a handhold, they, they call it a handhold, I'm not so sure how that ties into everything, but uh, there might be some money involved uh, for trenching uh, and things like that, which we could get a finalized price once we know how many lights we want to put in. Um, if we wanted to add, let's say, one or two street lights along Coconut, uh, closer to the indentation where we come in, we can do that. There'd be a little, uh, whatever the fee is for the trenching, but the light posts are basically free. Uh, as we know, nothing's really free. You get, it's going to be an additional $20, 15 to $20 a month on our electric bill for each additional post. And we would have to sign an agreement, a 10-year contract. So, um, once we do that, and I don't know if there's any, I, I don't know what they would do if we decided we wanted out of that, they'd have to remove the post and charge us accordingly. But what we're going to have to do is take some kind of a survey to see how people feel about adding additional lights along Coconut Road. We will have to get permission from the county because it is lighting up uh, areas along Coconut Road and it might interfere with their, uh, their plan. So, um, there's a few other things. We'll also have to know from the neighborhood uh, uh, individuals who feel it's too dark where, where they live and, and get a tally of how many posts we're talking about. Uh, and then we'll, I'll have them come and give us a, a final price once I know all the locations we want to address. Um, uh, just uh, raise your hand if you feel you'd like to see more lighting along Coconut Road. Nobody cares. Okay. Uh, well, that's fine. This is what we need to do. If it turns out uh, there's not enough support for this, uh, we're going to have to just scrap the idea. Uh, uh, it's going to be an expensive proposition if we go with private contractors trying to tunnel, tunnel under uh, our entrance roads uh, to put some kind of landscape lighting. It, it seems the most effective thing would be just have Florida Power and Light add a couple of posts. Um, but uh, we'll continue, we'll, we'll do something to try to get it out there and, and see how people respond to it. If we get a majority vote, uh, we'll start getting a tally of how many posts we want and, and proceed from there. So, Bill, Bill. yeah. You know, it's, um, there, was, there was a reasonable number of people on the survey, uh, just the email survey, that were interested in entrance lighting, but we didn't define it. Um, you know, you're proceeding down a path of, uh, you know, the FPL 
big lights and everything. I'm really not sure what everybody thinks when they think about entrance lighting. I mean, it could just be uh, getting more lights on the trees there. It could be uh, heavier lighting, junk lighting on our signs. Um, I know Larvieri, uh, probably mispronouncing that, but he was the one that originally suggested it uh, some time ago. Um, I'll at least get back to him and find out what his ideas were. Uh, and if anybody else has any ideas on pursuing some sort of entrance lighting that's better than what we've got, uh, you know, get a hold of us because there were a number of people that sort of said, yes, we like that, but I don't think we know what that is. You, we're limited with FBL because they don't offer you anything, uh, you know, these highlights and uh, the, the most logical thing would be that post that we already have around the community and adding some more of those. Uh, there's nothing in, in a way of landscape lighting shooting up on the, on the bushes or anything like that, we'd have to go with a private company. As I said at the last meeting, private companies are going to be at least $8,000 to put a, uh, you know, reason, a small amount of lighting uh, because they have to tunnel into those, uh, the entryway and the exit. Well, that's, so, that's not what I mean, Bill. We've got existing lighting there. Yeah. I don't know how much uh, high, higher horsepower we can put on the wattage. lighting that we currently have, but, the, but that, if you boosted the horsepower would certainly provide additional lighting at the entrance. Maybe that's what people want. I don't know. It seemed to me it, it, it had to do with the darkness on the, on the way to the community with, where the indentation is, it's pretty dark there. Also, from that angle, the lampposts get blocked by trees a bit. So you don't see the light till you get right up. And those bulbs are, are kind of low, low voltage, low wattage. Uh, uh, so that's another thing, and they have different degrees of wattage. But it's a pretty involved thing, and you know, it would be like a whole campaign to arrive at, at what you really want. And we have to make sure that there's really a necessity, a justification for it. So um, what I'll do is, uh, I, I think we'll have to talk about getting it out there somehow and seeing what kind of response we get. And uh, if there's not enough of a response, we're gonna have to, you know, put that off. Um, coconut berm plantings, uh, now this guy put these uh, sea grapes in and I call him, I tell him uh, you got about five of them that are dying and you better check with the sprinkler, we got to make sure we're getting enough water. Uh, so he says they're probably going to do better. As far as I'm concerned, they're dead and he guaranteed that he'd replace anything that died. We have one Exora that, that's dead and uh, it looks to me about five uh, sea grapes. So uh, I just emailed him again today and, and I'm working on that. But um, according to the contract, they will make good. I also told him I want to know when the sprinkler guy comes because according to our contract, they test the, the uh, irrigation once a month. So I want to I want to know that he showed up and, and he rang my bell and uh, watch him go around and, and test the system out. Um, okay, uh, mulch overpayment recovery now. When I was doing the, the investigation on, on the, the mulch company, I see that there was $8,000 on, on the books. And I'm wondering why that is. And uh, apparently, they were overpaid. Uh, they were paid twice in, in, in December of 2011 for that invoice for, for doing the mulch. The guy got a check, uh, Ashcal, uh, a check at the beginning of December and one at the end which he should have refunded. It's a mistake uh, on a management company, but we can blame and blame, blame, and blame Gail. It doesn't, blaming doesn't solve the problem. The problem is this guy had 4,400 of our money, and when he was uh, given a second check, he, he, didn't, uh, he didn't want to return it. I called him. He said it's too late. I deposited, and uh, uh, I had to pay taxes. I said, no, you're going to return it. And I told Susie, I, I, you can tell how annoying I was with the emails every day. Did you get our money? Did you get our money? She said, I'll send a letter, tell them we're going to the Better Business Bureau. And um, he wanted to pay us back in mulch. I said, no, you are not getting the job this year uh, because he was also charging $1,200 more for the same amount of mulch than the guy we got now, who, who's already with us, True Green. So I kept saying to Susie to, to send him a letter, and she says, I'll... I'll